Today I'm going to show you my texture workflow for assets in Unreal Engine 5. I have this sword here that I modeled in ZBrush and I painted in Substance Painter and it looks like this in Substance. To export our stuff out of Substance we can do it in three ways. I'm going to show you the first way that I typically use. If I hit Control shift e on the keyboard I have my export presets and under our output directory I have a folder for it and I have my output template. This is the default output template that I will typically use for rendering other stuff in other render engines like Cinema 4D, Blender, Maya, etc. So let's go ahead and export this and when I just don't change any of the other settings I could just keep this as a 4k map sure export and I'm gonna get all the maps that I need. Now, before I leave Substance Painter, I'm gonna show you two other things. I'm gonna export the other output templates that I will use for Unreal. And with our output template here, we can switch this to our Unreal packed version. And we're gonna keep this as an 8-bit PNG. So we have our PNG format file type right here. I will save this in the appropriate folder, Unreal PNGs, select folder, export, now I'm going to go ahead and export this one more time and set the file type to an EXR, like so. Now we can see here that the bit depth has changed from 8 to 16, which means we just have more colors in it. So let's go ahead and save this in the appropriate folder. EXR is right there and select folder, hit export. The EXRs will be bigger on average, so you just have to decide what's important for your game project. Now, with all my maps exported from Substance Painter, let's go ahead and make a mental note of what this looks like currently. Now, the lighting will be different when we go into Unreal, but we can see how shiny this is, or lack thereof. This is a very matte sword, kind of inspired by a lot of the more popular video games like Fortnite, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, etc. Let's go ahead and jump into Unreal. And I have my three folders for all the maps that I'm going to import. Let's double click on this PNG folder and first import that first set of images. I have that right here. And we can see here that I have my color map, my emissive, which is gonna be the glow, my height, which is gonna add some extra detail to our geometry, metallic, normal, roughness, etc. Take all this stuff, bring it in. And if you don't know how to create a material in Unreal, you can right click in the empty space, material, call this BB underscore PNG demo and double click on the sphere material. And now we get this window. Let's go ahead and bring in all these material maps that we just imported from Substance Painter and uh, drop it into my node graph. Let's go ahead and maximize the window, take each one. We'll take the base color, put it up here, pipe it in there. This one is the emissive. We can go ahead and pipe this here and I'll keep this more towards the center because I want to make sure I take my metallic. I don't need the height one right now, so I can actually delete the height one. I'll take my metallic and pipe this into the appropriate slot. I'll take my normal map, right click in the empty space and move around the node space just so I can give myself a little bit more room. Take the normal, pump it in, and the roughness, and put that there. Now, there is a little fun fact that I'm going to share with you. If you select all of your nodes and hit Shift-A on the keyboard, it will left justify all of your selection. And then if you right-click and then go to Alignment, you can see all these cool alignment properties for our nodes in our material window. Let's just distribute vertically. And now it looks a little bit more organized, and we can go ahead and hit Save close this and drop this material on our thing. And this looks pretty good. It looks really shiny though. And this is the default setting that you get from exporting Substance Painter assets. You could very well dive into your material and hit the M key on the keyboard and go to your roughness and create a uh, multiply node and connect it between your roughness and then hit the one key and then go ahead and put that into the B property and then set this value to like two. And that should help accent the material and make it less shiny because we're basically trying to increase these values. So we can see here, it's maybe a little bit too shiny, bring this down to 1.5 and maybe that'll help fix it a little bit. But overall, my goal is to try and make this look, this look in Unreal look this, make it look as, as close to this as possible. 
So I'm gonna show you the other workflows I use now, and that involves the other presets. So let's go ahead and close this material. We don't want that anymore. Let's go into the PNG Unreal right here, this folder, and I will take my uh, materials that I just exported, and we can see here that we have less maps. We have this bright, beautifully colorful image right here. This is basically combining our ambient occlusion, our roughness, and metallic into a single image and putting it into different channels, the red, green, and blue. So I'll take these images and bring it into my Unreal project, and we will go ahead and make a new material, BB underscore PNG combined, sure. Double click on our material and we'll do the same thing, base color into the appropriate slot, emissive into the appropriate slot. Now this one, the occlusion, roughness, etc. We'll bring this in, but we'll connect that in just a second. I want to just bring in my normal and pipe this in like so. Now, if we go ahead and maximize this window and take this occlusion, roughness, metallic, like I said earlier, our other properties, our other maps are baked into the other channels, the red, green, and blue. So we can take this red channel right here and pipe this into the ambient occlusion. We can take the green channel and pipe this into the roughness, and we can take the blue channel and pipe this into the metallic. So now we're gonna get this weird, crazy node hodgepodge of things. Let's select everything, shift A to uh, left align everything. And the way I remember this bright, colorful combined map is R-A-G-R-B-M. I'm still trying to think of an acronym for that, but whenever I'm working with Substance Painter and these material maps, I always just try and remember the combination R-A-G-R-B-M, so then I can connect all the nodes appropriately from my Substance Painter baked connected map. So I can go ahead and save this. Now when we put it on our object here, it's gonna look a little different. Sure, fine, but again, I want this to look as close to my Substance Painter asset as possible. So what you can do here is instead, we're gonna double click on this combined map and look at look at it. Hey, pretty, it's pretty. We're gonna uncheck sRGB right here and it's gonna get really unhappy. It, we can see it just closed my material. What's going on? Well, this is now errored out. It doesn't know what it's looking for, but because we unchecked the sRGB, which is the default, we need to change the sampler type under the errored out material. So we can go to the sampler type, uncheck or check this and make sure that now we actually need this to be linear color. So when we do that, it should fix. And when we hit save, we can go ahead and preview. And hey, look, it's significantly less shiny. Obviously it's a little blown out right now, but I can just go ahead and adjust my light. Let's set this to like 0.5. I also realize I have a point light right here that's pretty much lighting it dead on and center. If I set this to like 1.2, yeah, that's looking a lot nicer and I can bring my HDRI back up to like 0.1. That looks much closer to what I have in Substance Painter over here. So the lighting will be a contributing factor to your render in Unreal relative to how you exported Substance. Now, I'm gonna go back and go into my EXR folder here and show you the workflow for that. And this is something that I will probably end up doing more often, but you also have to decide what is gonna be most important for your project. If I look at the normal map of my EXR images here, I can see that it's 41 megabytes versus if I go into the uh, other maps and look at this, it's about 20 megabytes. So if file size is important to you, you do need to consider that. But let's go ahead and bring in these EXRs into my Unreal project and we'll make a new material. We'll call this BB underscore EXRs. And now let's do the same exact thing. Material comes in, base color goes in, and they should really make some sort of plugin or something to save all these clicks. But uh, maybe one day, normal map goes into the normal map and then your occlusion will go into the appropriate slots. Now we can go ahead and take the RA, ambient occlusion, GR, and BM. Go ahead and save that. And now we can notice one thing. I didn't do any changes to my Unreal project, but the sampler type is already set 
to linear color because an EXR is a linear image. It's already looking for that. So when I go ahead and hit save and bring this over, let's go ahead and remove my material on my sword and then take this EXR and drop it in. And that looks different. It definitely looks different. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, this is much closer to what I have in Substance Painter. So you could use either workflow, does not matter. As long as it looks good for your client, good for your project, your art director approves, whatever, make sure you follow the rules that are important. But I would probably end up using EXRs more often because this looks closer to what I had in Substance Painter. And I did not have to go into my material and check on or check off sRGB. It's just there and because it's an EXR already, it's not letting me click this. So you could use the EXR and it looks fine. You could use the Baked Maps Unreal and it's gonna look a little different, but hey, I still think this looks closer to what we had in Substance Painter. And you could also just use this one and hey, this still looks good. You just need to decide what's most important for your render. So all that being said, I hope you learned a little bit about my workflow from Substance to Unreal. If you learned something, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And as always, if you're new to the channel, you know what it is, but we're going to say it as always, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Games. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.